today on CityCast Denver. Welcome to fall in Colorado, where maybe it'll be 90 degrees or maybe it'll snow. Either way, we have some ideas for great outdoor adventures to kick off this season and enjoy whatever Mother Nature has to offer us. Today is Thursday, October 3rd. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Politics and Green Chili correspondent Justine Sandoval. Hi. Hi. And we have a returning guest. He's a fly fishing guide, an outdoor enthusiast, and an educator. Elon Stribling, welcome back. Hello. Good afternoon. So we had so much fun last time with both of you two talking about cool stuff to do. I think it was the su- was it summer or spring? It was warmer temperatures for sure. Stuff to do outside. And we're going to sort of go radius wise, like uh, within the city, something you can do within a day, and then just a cool outdoor adventure anywhere in the state for the fall season. Um, so I guess let's start with you, Justine, an outdoorsy adventure in the city. What do you got? What do you got for us? So I had a lot of uh, thoughts on what you could do in the city for an outdoorsy adventure. So all of my adventures here are like spooky themed, (laughs) Halloween, (laughs) fall themed. Uh, So one of the things that I found and I actually participated in this weekend was a ghost adventure walking tour. Okay. And I consider it outdoors because you are walking outside for this tour. (laughs) Fair. Uh, But it was with Denver Terrors. Com, who have a variety of different um, tours you can take. You can take some that are very short with just a few houses in Cap Hill that aren't noted as haunted or have been known for paranormal activity. And then uh, you can do even longer guided tours that they do as well, but they'll work with your group. So we had a group of people that was a private tour and we met and it was actually part of a pub crawl as well. Oh, no way. (laughs) So it it was really fun. So if you're looking for something different that, uh, you know, can take you outside and something you could do on maybe a Saturday evening with your friends, uh, we met at Pub and Pen to start. And then we went to um, several different sites. One was the Patterson Inn, which is an old it was oh, now beautiful. a hotel, but yeah. it's been very, it's been several different things throughout the years. Uh, lots of ghost stories around that. Uh, we also visited the Peabody Mansion, which I didn't know much about. I and I'm either. more interested now. There's a lot of mystery around it. And of course, the Molly Brown House. Yes. Uh, so very fun. We stopped at several bars along the way, but it was a great <laughs> way a great to get Colorado some steps. way to do it. <laughs> totally. You know? Have get a some beer. steps in, get a beer Look in. Look at some architecture and changing leaves, just be in the city. Totally. And our tour guide, Jessica, was awesome. Very fun. Very Cap Hill. And I saw another tour that was like more corporate-y and they showed up in like a big bus and they had speakers and they co- completely took over the whole space at the Molly Brown House. And I'm like, I'm very happy with the tour we picked because it seemed well, like just very- You want to walk around outside. Yeah. Total local. I love that. It was very fun. So that was my outdoor adventure for the city. Take I Take a ghost it. walking tour. Were you scared? Um, you know what? I'm going to admit because I already know like everything about everything with Denver. I was like, oh, I know the history. So I was there like, actually, she's, there's this one part that they didn't talk about. <laughs> you were being the most annoying Denver person that I feel like oh, all I was biting three my of time. us have been at some point. Just cause, no, they were very good, very thorough. But I was like, oh, and also... <laughs> I heard that, (laughs) you know, so um, I was not scared, Uh. but I have been scared in some Denver situations. Cheeseman Park at night. I was just going to say, did they take you to Cheeseman Park? No, but they did tell the history of Cheeseman Park. And I think one of the longer tours does include Cheeseman and all the mansions up there. Yeah. But yeah, lots of partying going on in Cap Hill back in the day. So lots of restless, drunken ghosts walking around. (laughs) I love it. Very Denver. Well, Elon, what about you? An outdoorsy adventure within the city? I think one of my favorites that I haven't done in the last couple of years, but I really enjoy is uh, going to the Denver Botanic Gardens just for one of their like uh, fall yeah, that's a great... festival yeah. things. They put one on like every other week or every weekend. Um, sometimes it's beer. Sometimes it's just like seeing all the flowers. Sometimes it's kids events. Uh, but I just think it's, I don't know. I just love the Denver Botanic Gardens. It's like right downtown. It's so close and it's just, it is like a little slice of nature heaven. So I think, you know, if you're, if you're like, oh, I need a date idea this afternoon or Seriously. this evening, don't just surprise them and say, hey, we're going downtown, dress up nice and then go to the Denver Botanic Gardens because it's it's beautiful and they always put on great events. Yeah, I always think about like concert season is when I'm probably there the most. And yeah. like, you know, we're thinking about when things are in bloom, but the 
the Botanic Gardens is just as interesting in the fall. It's gorgeous. Totally. And you could take your food in there, too. Oh, I yeah. Heard. I so you have a little picnic, and they have a great little cafe in there. I was yeah. going to say, their food, too, is also really good. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to do, like, a date and impress somebody, I feel like that is a cool place. Totally. Yes. It's like another little world from, like, crazy York Street traffic to, like, this beautiful, serene like, space in the city. It's sort of a sanctuary. It is really you, nice. You can see the park, you know, on the mm-hmm. back side of it, which kind of reminds you of, like, wow, this was here before a lot of the like it, the, I guess the thing I think about is the foresight that yeah. folks had to say we should preserve this area in the middle of what we know is going to be a booming city yes and, and it still is it still is that's so good good call so both of these are things you can do right in the city center and they're pretty accessible uh, I know like you said Eland a lot of, there's a lot of programming at the Botanic Gardens just mm-hmm. check out their calendar because they have a million different kinds of things to do depending on what you're interested in. So I love that idea. Well, our next category is an outdoorsy adventure you can do in a day. So something that you want to travel outside of the city for, but you, you know, you don't want to, you're not going to overnight it for this one. Um, Eland, what do you got? I would say go fishing. (laughs) Just, just in general, it doesn't have to be in Denver. Uh, I think if you are ever wanted to get into a real Colorado hobby, which is fly fishing, this is like one of the best times of year to do it because it's the weather is beautiful, the scenery is beautiful, but also like in terms of fishing science and ichthyology, the fish are really, really hungry right now because they know it's getting colder, it's getting darker earlier. And so the fishing is just like- So you might have more chances. To catch fish. Okay. So, I mean, if you can, if you want to hire a guide or go with a guide, this is a great time of year to go. Or if you- have a friend you can borrow gear from. This is a great time to to run out there. Go to the Arkansas. Go to the Eagle River. Go to the Poudre River. Um, there's just so many places to to catch like the fish, and during the fall is is the best. So if you want to if you want to become a huge fly fisher person, go fishing right now. I feel like your chances of success being greater in the fall is a good way to hook somebody into wanting to do something again. Because yes. if you go fishing and you don't catch anything, you're like, well, well I mean, I also go fishing and don't catch anything. And I go, this is stupid. <laughs> Who would do this? Then you're like, well, I'm back at it again. Uh, I have to go back. It's an addiction. But um, yes, during the fall is a, is a great time just because it is your, your chances of catching the fish, especially in like a beautiful environment is like you get to take pictures and Brag, be relaxed really. and be like, yeah, I was, I was out there doing the thing. So during the fall is the, is the best time, and water's getting low because, you know, it's not summer anymore. It's not runoff. We don't have like big rainstorms, so water's getting low. So this is the best time before Perfect time it starts to get too chilly, too cold. Which I don't fish during the cold because. I'm just going to stay inside. You're not that kind of... I'm, nope. I'm with you. I'm not hardcore. Uh, I like a bluebird day. I'm lazy. Well, you also know <laughs> what our beautiful days look like. So you're like, yes. why would I yeah. well, bother? I, I could just know? go inside. <laughs> yeah. Justine, are you a fisher? Are you... Yes. I feel like your grandpa <gasps> fishes, right? And yeah. So- I grew up in a family of... Fisher folk, fishing folk. <laughs> I guess that's the way I was saying. I it. like I said fishing a fisherman. Folk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I actually have a bar that I've mentioned before, yes. and it's actually a hunting fishing club. And my family is very dedicated to fishing. So I think I went on my first fishing trip when I was th- three months old. Oh wow. I don't know how to fly fish though, and that's something I want to do. I'm just like old school. Yeah. Weight Regular, lure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I grew up fishing. I love fishing. Fall is a great time to fish. I remember we always would do a big family camping trip every year at the end of summer, beginning of fall, to Lake John, Colorado, and go fish up there. So I love it. I love it. I love just catching, like, seeing the colors, too. Mm-hmm. Like, everything, just, like, being out in nature at different times of the year. It just reminds you, too, like, Colorado is beautiful year-round. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. This episode is brought to you by Denver Health. Not sure if you need urgent care or the emergency room? Denver Health has you covered. For non-life-threatening issues like cold symptoms, minor injuries, abdominal pain, and even stitches and x-rays, Denver Health's urgent care is your go-to choice. Just walk right in. No appointment is needed. With four convenient options, including adult care, pediatric care, virtual visits, and a downtown location at 16th and California, Denver Health makes it easy to get the care you need when you need it. But remember, if you're facing a serious life-threatening condition, head to the emergency room right away. Urgent care is for those unexpected issues that need quick attention but aren't emergencies. Plus, Denver Health accepts most insurance plans. Check out Denver Health's amazing five-star reviews on Google. Patients love Denver Health Urgent Care. Learn more at denverhealth.org slash urgent care. That's denverhealth.org slash urgent care. 
episode is brought to you by Town Hall Collaborative. Town Hall Collaborative is a unique mixed-use gathering space and bar featuring independently owned businesses that offer coffee, food, retail shops, cocktails, and so much more. Located in the heart of Denver's Art District on Santa Fe, this independently queer and women-owned business hosts hundreds of events all year long. Think comedy shows, concerts, trivia, and food truck nights. The space is also available for private rentals. Throw your next birthday bash or wedding at Town Hall. Town Hall Collaborative, my dream venue. It's a bar, but it has really good coffee. Queen City, it's delicious. They have couches, they have nice tables, they have concerts. I love this place. Plus, join Town Hall on Friday, October 4th to celebrate their second anniversary during the first Friday Art Walk. Enjoy drink specials, food, live entertainment, and shopping at the Town Hall Marketplace from 4 p.m. to midnight. For more information, a full calendar, or to book your next event at Town Hall, visit townhallcollaborative.com. That's townhallcollaborative.com. Uh, Justine, what about you? What's your day trip? So my day trip, continuing on with my spooky theme, spooky <laughs> adventure, um, I actually visited a vampire grave in Lafayette, Colorado. Um, yeah, so there is this vampire of Lafayette story that's been around for over 100 years now. And um, it's actually, the thing about it was when I heard this story, I was like, a vampire grave? This sounds cool. But when I dug into it more, it's actually a horrible story of xenophobia. (laughs) But it it is actually a very, it's a very interesting story. So there was a um, immigrant who came to Colorado in the early 1900s named Theodore Glava, or we went by Fodor Glava. And he was um, from Transylvania. And he came to America to work in the mines. And he actually died of the Spanish flu in 1918. And they buried him in a poor section of the Lafayette County Cemetery, our municipal cemetery. And um, his gravestone is, like, very, like, quickly done. It looks like they just scratched it into some— and he's buried next to someone someone else from the mine who also died oh. of the flu. So the gravestone is very, like— Crude. Odd, yeah, crude-looking, which would make Bland. you think, like, this yeah. could be, like— a vampire's grave. And then they had trans- somebody who ever made this translated some words on there, like from Romanian, I believe. And so there became this myth for some reason about this man who was from Transylvania, who there weren't a lot of of immigrants from there, sure. that he was a vampire. So it's said that the people of Lafayette dug him up, put a stake, and that when they dug him oh. up, they found signs of vampirism. Like mm. they said he had blood on his mouth that his I teeth mean, we and know how they did so that with growing. witches, so. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so I'm like, Wait, did they really exhume this poor man's mm. body to do this? There's no actual evidence that that ever happened. But the lore and the myth comes from right where his grave is. Uh, there's a tree growing out of the middle, like <gasps> where they say the stake in his heart is growing into a tree. Oh my and it's just kind of odd tree. Like there's other trees there, but that one is very like you it's very see clearly it gro- you can see growing. It. Yeah. And roses started to grow around there too. And so there's just all of this like myth around this is this vampire grave and people go visit and been have visiting it for a long oh time gosh. now. And um yeah, it was really interesting to hear that story. But it just you know, like I said, I was kind of worried about sharing this because I don't want to like yeah. contribute to this um, xenophobia that we especially have going on right now. But I think it was a good story and it's a good lesson when you look deeper into it. Um, the cemetery is a lovely little cemetery right next to, it's on Baseline Road in Lafayette. It's right next to the rec center and it's very small and there's a lot of very interesting graves there from the same era. So it's a really nice place to go take a walk around, um, check out this gravestone and let the lore of the vampire bring you there but take a moment to reflect and pay this person respects yeah it was a really cool adventure so the lafayette the grave of the lafayette vampire i also like to the the tree and the roses because it kind of just like reminds you that also nature will have its way and also maybe sending its own message in a way like that to me changes the way that i would feel there yeah that's how it felt when i saw the the tree i was like all right this is actually really cool and so they encourage people to bring um roses or bring an offering but leave the vampire stuff at home yeah (laughs) Let that guy, let that yeah. guy rest. Don't bring your garlic oh along. <laughs> no. uh, some pasta. Bring some flowers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
That's different. No, food is a good offering. <laughs> just, as long as yeah, the garlic is a great food. offering. <laughs> I was going to say, you want that on your altar? You could take it to I his mean, grave. If he's been gardening all day, he's probably a little hungry. So totally, throw, yeah. But he's a vampire, so he <laughs> wants blood. Grow, growing roses and a beautiful tree. <laughs> Fedor Glava. Oh, that's, that's a cool a, name. I've never heard that story before. I never heard it either. And then I came across it somewhere and like, Halloween stuff in Colorado and I just became really intrigued so nice little day trip to Lafayette I feel like Colorado is just a spooky place the more you hear stories about that I don't know why but yeah but you it's just looking back into our history and realizing like where when as we were you know making homes in different places all of these things have to happen you have to have a graveyard I was actually just I was in Nantucket and I went to a Quaker graveyard and they don't believe in any sort of um, grandness around anything they're very simple and so you had to like hunt for the stones some of them didn't even have gravestones oh so they just put people in the ground yeah and they didn't want it because they don't want any attention or fanfare to their existence it's like all about a lack of idolatry and stuff so east coast i know i was like i'm learning so much about the quakers but it was just interesting because it's like a noted thing we're like oh we'll go to the quaker graveyard and then you go and there's nothing really to look at but then it just makes you sit and think like oh this is what was happening in 1699 walmart parking lot (laughs) yeah at least it's not at least it's not just a parking lot um well our final category today is an outdoorsy adventure within the state where you could go for multiple days or take you know overnight if you want um justine what do you have so my uh day trip doesn't take us far from lafayette colorado it actually goes up to boulder and once again spooky theme uh mine is a hike to the mallory bat cave uh, which is accessible oh, yes. um, through the uh national center for atmospheric research's parking lot which actually is a great a, a series of trails right there that you can access from the parking lot. Uh, so there's parking. You can go and park there. <laughs> um, but so Boulder, a lot of people don't know this, but Boulder actually has a bat cave and it's accessible via trail. It's a pretty difficult trail. Uh, so this might not be for it's everybody. A, it's a real hike. Yeah, it's a real hike. Once you get to the actual like cave, they call it a scramble, but I think it is more of a rock climb. <laughs> <laughs> like actually oh, wow. sharing a cliff, but you can it is you can do it. Um, it's a little bit more energy to crawl up the side of the rock, but once you get up there, there is like this beautiful iron gate. It looks like Batman lives there or something. Like very. <laughs> Can you imagine the people that put that in there? Oh, yeah. They had to hike up. They had to scramble up the scramble. Uh, But it's actually a really cool thing to do this time of year because it is only open October 1st through April 1st um, to help avoid uh, people bringing uh, diseases to the bats. I was like, just think oh, we had COVID it goes both and now ways. it's the okay. yeah. I'm like, actually, we were making the bats <laughs> sick here. Oh, my gosh. So there's a, that is the time of year when uh, you can go up there and actually see it. But the trail's steep, like I said, but the view up there is really beautiful. And it's a really cool thing to see and to go check out where So it's like full of bats? Colony of bats. I didn't see any bats. I think that's part of why you can go up there during this time, because they've migrated somewhere else. So nobody's up there bothering them. But the cave sick. itself is worth yes. the trek. It's very cool just to see the gate and you can look it up online um, and see this really cool Do they gate. open the gate for the bats no. when they come back? <laughs> they can, like they're all hole. welcome home. <laughs> That's how I imagined it. I was like, oh, Batman lives here and they open the gate and they come home out in April on April yeah. 1st. Yeah. <laughs> welcome home. <laughs> I just like, I just think about the person that had to build that gate on, on there. Like it's so... It's, oh, someone, yeah. someone probably thought they were lying. Yeah. They're like, what do you do? It's like, I'm building a I'm building a gate around a bat bat. here for that. (laughs) And you uh, have to climb there to get to it. Be like, "Mm, I'm sure you are. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and the gate was necessary because people were going into the cave and messing with the bats. So as people do. (laughs) Yes. How we got into so many predicaments. How we got to the vampire. Yeah. Yeah. How we got to the vampire. Back to the the vampire. Everything's connected. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Elon, what's your what's your uh, recommendation for something around the state? Around the state, sort of an overnight trip is I think one of the prettiest places probably in the world, but tell your ride. Colorado. Oh, I mean, I, yes. it's probably brought up so much and all the time and it's expensive and it's far away, but I, especially during the fall, it it is just a remarkable, remarkable place. They have so many like great music events and film festivals there yes. during the fall. The Tw- Telluride Horror Festival. Yes, yeah. during the fall. And then you could get to so many other places that are just, you know, maybe less than an hour away from Telluride and get to the San Juan River, which is an amazing river. So I just, I think just going to Telluride and then doing the gondola 
Oh um, yeah. During Honestly, the fall, I mean, it it. I hate to be the cheesy person, but it's just it's go- <laughs> it's just gorgeous. But sometimes it's the cheesy stuff that's like truly the most yeah. fun, or like the thing that makes you feel the most about this place. It's hard to you it's know? hard to like take a picture of it and be like this does it justice because it never does, especially there early in the morning or late in the evening. It's- it is so beautiful up there, and I actually think a lot of people don't get there because like you can only go one road in oh, and out. Oh, it's far. So and yeah, and my sister lives in Durango, Colorado, so we went up there one of the last times I was there and you're right I don't can't even describe it. I'm like you just have to see it it's just gorgeous but that's what's cool though I what I love is places that you can't photograph like yes. that you can't catch in your camera phone that you just have to see because it's like you just have to believe me and you just have to go yeah and see yeah. it and then people go and they just ah. Oh. and you know I don't like the word leaf peepers I'm <laughs> am, I'm anti leaf peepers I love your your bit on this it's so it's, good it's just I I hate the phrase you don't want to be like Brie, would you like to go leaf peeping? With no, me? I think it's weird. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's yeah. Peeping. Well, because we don't see peeping. Peep- Tom. Yeah, I was like peeping is generally <laughs> yeah. Not peeping is never cool a positive do. thing. I want no. the leaves to know that we're there to look at them. I don't want to <laughs> be <laughs> just get a little peep, sh- little yeah. peep, peep show. Just voyeurism for trees, and I don't, I don't think that's okay. But it is one of the places where I, I've gone in the fall where I just go, I look at these leaves. And it's, not in like a creepy way, but yeah. just in like a leaf leering, <laughs> leering at the leaves. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but no, I heard it's someone one of those... call it a golden hike. Oh, I like that. Yeah, but also golden shower. I, okay, yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say, I was <laughs> like, we could really take this in some real disappointing directions. But um, everything about going in the out in the fall just gets either scary or perverted pretty quickly. <laughs> exactly. But what I love about it is, again, like we all grew up here, we can still be awed by nature. Yes. Right? So even if you're brand new to the state and you're like, people say Colorado is beautiful, let me show you. But also if you've been here your whole life, maybe this is an aspect of it you've never seen before. And Telluride is definitely what I have to say. I haven't done it. And I have like these awesome cousins that are like all extreme sports and they like mountain bike through there yeah. and like and they've talked about how gorgeous it is. And it's just it is like you have to make an intentional trek up there to do it yeah. yeah and you won't be disappointed yeah like you i've never been up there and been like why like even if the drive is long and it's you know it's one way getting out there i've been there when it's snowing or during the fall or heat of the summer when there's so many people up there but it just you just it's go worth it. yes like this is this is colorado like this is i love it a it's wallpaper gorgeous. yeah I and the it. leaves turn later down there. Mm-hmm. So if you go down, you have got some time. We have got plenty of time, time still. Yes. Okay. To That's go peep it. Please. To go peep. <laughs> go leer at the leaves. <laughs> Me and the peeping toms and the leaves. Go holler at the leaves. We just got to change it somehow. <laughs> go hit on the hey, leaves. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I see you changing. <laughs> looking good this year. Last year was good. This year, you're looking even better. You're looking amazing. Well, if you have any ideas for us or places that you always go to in the fall across the state, let us know on the uh, We're Not Leaf Peeping hotline, 720-500-5418. Justine Elon, thank you so much. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. I had a ball. Thank you. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed this show, why not take a minute to tell your hiking buddy about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you later. When my baby was a little baby, my husband... He's not like that size anymore. No, he was so cute on his New York trip. Oh, he was a New York baby. He goes, Mom, New York stinks. Yes. <laughs> that is true. He's like, it's really stinky here. And I was like, we're standing next to a trash can. Yeah. Yes, it does <laughs> stink. <laughs>